How's it going, you guys? We are gonna be planting today in this area, right over here. I have a shrub that I'm really, really excited for. This is the Proven Winners 2024 Jessamine Juiced Orange Shrub. And I am so excited for this. It is so pretty. So, um, Proven Winners just sent this out to me and I couldn't be more excited about it. So, let's go over the specs of this. I do have my phone right here with all the information pulled up because it's a 2024 shrub and I don't know anything about it. So, so it grows zones 7 through 10. I will pop right up here the little growing zone map if you don't know your growing zone and if you're still not sure what your growing zone is just type it into your zip code say type into google what is my growing zone and then your zip code and that'll tell you exactly where you grow we're also featuring miss sadie today <laughs> it grows zones 7 through 10 i'm a zone 9a so perfect for me and it needs to be in a place that gets pretty much full sun or part sun so part sun is at bare minimum four to six hours of sun. Full sun is six plus hours of sun. This will do better if it is in an area that is full sun. So I've got an area right tucked in, right next to our little lion fountain. That is a full sun area. It gets sun from probably about 11 o'clock in the morning to about, uh, about now, which is about 5.30 at night. So it gets, full sun gets the full hours that it needs this guy is gonna be so perfect there it's gonna be a little evergreen type shrub for us in warmer zones and it produces flowers that attract hummingbirds and we get so many hummingbirds on our property so that is perfect we have a crazy hummingbird population and also a crazy butterfly population and butterflies bees and hummingbirds super big attractant also deer resistant before I forget I'm throwing that out there so this is gonna be in there and this is actually not very far from our hummingbird feeder our hummingbird feeder is actually like right there and we used to have a hot lip salvia right there but it started to decline it was about four years old and it just started to decline it got I think a little bit too woody and I didn't prune on it enough so we popped that out just a month ago before I even knew that they were sending this out I popped it out and I was on the look for something that attracted butterflies and hummingbirds I wanted to continue to be able to feed those guys so this is a really pretty shrub the flowers on it are these like orange colony type little like bushels it looks like a bunch of them like a cluster of flowers coming from one stem so um, I'm really excited about that, especially to get this like pop of orange. It's gonna really stand out with the black fence right there. This shrub though does bloom on old wood, meaning that it blooms on the growth of last year. So all of the growth that happens this year is what's producing blooms for next year. So any pruning that needs to be done on it needs to be done pretty much immediately after it's done blooming or not at all. Ideally, you'd put it in a place where you're just able to set it and forget it let it do its thing and just continue to grow um it's not that large of a shrub so that's kind of nice <laughs> i don't want to say it's not that big because it is it gets up to five feet tall but it's not like absolutely massive like some shrubs that get like you know six seven eight nine feet tall so reaching four to five feet tall and three to four feet wide i think that i'll be able to tuck it in and it should hit right about there just under the fence so i think that's gonna be perfect absolutely amazing right there with all of these beautiful orange like clusters of blooms and then evergreen perfect winter interest we didn't have any winter interest over there so it was needed proven winners describes the flowers on this thing as a cream sickle colored tubular shaped orange flower and um i think that that's gonna be so pretty we have very few orange flowers we i actually just started getting into orange flowers this year we would we bought a orange rose and then um actually i think that's it but i wanted to get into more orange colors i also have a spirea that has like orange leaves in it and so i'm excited about that also so just a few little orange plants around the property and i think that this will be a really nice addition especially i'm just most excited about the hummingbirds and the butterflies being able to be super attracted to this the like tubular shape flowers of it are going to be like the biggest attractant to them they loved the salvia that was there and i would like to replace that on the property but i think that they're going to go absolutely crazy for this 
this guy, they did have to shear it when they shipped it to me. So it did cut off some of this year's growth, but that's okay because I can still see that there is tons of growth on here for that happened this year. And because our first frost date isn't until basically December 1st, it's November 30th. So I still have a little bit of time. So I'm expecting this guy to maybe put on just like the little tiniest amount of growth. I'm hoping I should get blooms for next year off of this. So let's get this guy planted. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some fertilizer in here and pop it in the ground right next to the lion fountain. I'm gonna have to pop up an umbrella because it's still getting a little bit of sun right now. Um, so let's go set up and get this guy planted. She's pretty root bound. So I'm gonna grab my pruners and I'm gonna tear this up just a little bit. because This is pretty solid. I'm not super big on tearing up root balls, but in cases like this, I definitely would like to. So I'm just gonna come through, tear this up a little bit, especially this bottom section here. It'll make it so that the roots don't go in circles. It'll make it so that some of them start to spread back out. Okay, so I got this tore up a little bit. And in this bucket right here, I usually keep Espoma Biotone. Espoma Biotone has mycorrhizae fungi in it. And that is what makes the, ro the roots on plants continue to grow. And I actually buy a whole extra bag of mycorrhizae fungi in it and I dump it in my Espoma Biotone. I just keep it in pails because this is so much easier to carry around. You can get these little pails at your local tractor supply or hardware supply store, feed store. And then I take it and I actually rough it up on the roots. Mycorrhizae fungi needs to come in contact with the roots in order for it to work. What it does is mycorrhizae fungi eats little holes in the roots and it promotes even more root growth. So you wanna really rub that stuff directly on the roots and get nice and good contact with it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the ground and back them. And then Proven Winners also sent me out this really, really cool steak that has the name of the plant like directly on it. I am really good at getting the names of plants. So I'm gonna pop that in there, in the ground, just like that, just so I don't forget what this is. And then I also do have drip already set up right by this plant. I'm, I'm just gonna set that right there. I have two tubes. Both of these look like they are a one gallon per hour. And I'm gonna make sure that it gets both of these. I really wanna make sure that it stays nice and hydrated. Okay, with that being done, I am gonna give it a nice, very deep soak of water, a big healthy drink. It really will appreciate it, especially with how root bound it was. And this soil right here is pretty dry. Like I said, I already had drip hooked up. It was going to the salvia that was there. Um, and so I just reused those tubes that were there. So it was perfect. Definitely hook it up to the drip. You know, I'm, I'm in California. I'm, those of you that are in zones seven through 10, you're a warmer zone. You wanna make sure your plants are getting plenty enough water. So let's give this guy a drink and then we're gonna say goodbye. All right, you guys, that is happy now. I am happy, very happy to have something more evergreen. I mean, we have a wall of arborvitas right there, but they're not, they're not doing so well. So we'll see how long they even make it. But very happy to have something more evergreen and something that flowers right there. It's gonna take up that entire space. It'll probably take a couple of years for it to completely fill that out. 
um, but it looks good and it's gonna be really nice for the hummingbirds and the butterflies. So I'm gonna go inside now, wash up, get the smell of the biotone off of my little fingers. And as always, everything that I use in this video is linked in the description down below. If you just hit the little button that says more and then you hit it again, I don't know why you have to hit it twice, but it has all of the links to everything that I use in every video, the watering wand, more information about this plant here, and um, lots of other little links of things that I, I think that are important in the garden. So hit that, check those guys out if you need more information about this. I think I did a pretty good job explaining it. <laughs> so new for next year in the garden centers, you guys should be seeing it coming sometime spring next year, I'm assuming. So yeah, that is gonna be it for this video, guys. I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.